Glamorgan made it two wins from three NatWest T20 Blast games this year as they sent the Sussex Sharks to their second consecutive defeat. The Welshman winning a thriller at the Sway Lake Stadium in Cardiff with Darren Sammy enjoying his debut by hitting the winning runs off the very last ball of the match. Put in by Jim Allenby, Sussex made a bright start with Ed Joyce driving the first ball of the match, delivered by the returning Graham Wagg for four. And it didn't take Luke Wright very long to do what he does just about every time he goes into bat in this competition, and that smashing sixes. He hit Wagg over the top in the game's third over before he repeated the dose off Will Owen in the next one. Between them, Wright and Joyce opened up with a stand of 35 in the first four and a half overs. Wright's wicket is always a big one for the opposition and he fell for 22 when he pulled a short ball from Michael Hogan well enough, but into the hands of Ben Wright. The good news for the Sharks, and indeed England, was that Matt Pryor was back after missing the last six weeks through injury. It was like he'd never been away as he was soon crashing the ball through the infield as his side picked up the rate with a highly entertaining partnership. 52 runs came in the power play and these two then took the score to 79 for one of the halfway stage of the innings. With a solid platform laid, both Joyce and Pryor went after Dean Koska. Both eased the ball over the rope for sixes as 15 runs came off the 12th over, by the end of which the Sharks had brought up their 100, these two putting on 67 runs in seven and a half overs. But the Sharks were then set back as importantly both these men were out in the same Allenby over. Joyce on a 39 made from 34 balls lost his middle stump as he went for a paddle. While Pryor, whose 39 had come off only 24 deliveries, fed Murray Goodwin a catch at backward point as the England man tried to guide the ball down to third man. So after 13 overs, the score read 107 for three and now two new batsmen were in. Not that that seemed to matter too much as both Rory Hamilton-Brown and Chris Nash were soon smashing the ball to all parts. Allenby had figures of two for nine from his first two overs, but his third went for 22, with these being two of the three sixes in what was the most expensive over of the innings. But again, both got out before they did too much damage. Koska has to take credit for the way Nash was dismissed. The bowler giving the ball plenty of air and some width to have Nash driving to wag after making nine. Hamilton Brown tried to keep things going and he was well supported for a short while by Ben Brown, who hit Hogan for successive fours at the end of the 18th over. So with two to go, the Sharks were on 158 for four. The penultimate over, crucially, cost only four runs and it also included the wickets of Hamilton Brown, who, having made 27 off 20 balls, was bowled by Wag as he tried to go over short fine leg. Wag then removed Yasser Arafat next ball before Brown, after starting the last over with a pair of boundaries, was bowled by Hogan. It meant that the Sharks ended on a competitive total of 178 for seven. So Glamorgan had to chase down at 8.9 runs per over and after a slow start in which only nine runs came off the first 17 balls, Allenby got the ball rolling by depositing John Lewis over deep mid wicket for a much needed maximum. Jacques Rudolph followed that up next ball with an edged four off Yasser Arafat before Allenby went after Lewis again to eventually take the total to 39 without loss at the end of the six overs of power play. It had been nothing more than a steady start for the home side. Indeed, when Allenby, who'd made 26 of an opening stand of 43 in seven overs, was very well held behind by Pryor off a bullet from Michael Yardy, it was the Sharks who would have been the happier of the two teams. What Glamorgan did very well, as it turned out, was that they kept wickets in hand, which meant that they always had enough to come in later on in the piece. Goodwin and Rudolph, courtesy of some trickery, added 31 for the second wicket in the next three overs. Goodwin was out to the last ball of the 10th over, slicing a shot off Chris Little, out to Stefan Pilot, and he left with his side on 74 for two. The target now, 105 off the second 10 overs of the innings. A tough ask. And it got even tougher when Mark Wallace was out in the next over, one which cost only six runs. But that brought in Chris Cook, and he became the man to play the innings of the night on his 28th birthday. 
He had no real time to play himself in. Instead, he had to go after the bowling. Something he did is he struck five fours in the space of only 10 deliveries, which brought the target down to a more manageable one of 65 off the last six overs. But Glamorgan weren't helped when Rudolph, having just made a 50 or 43 balls, picked out Joyce in the deep off pilot. Again, it was Sussex who appeared to be the favourites, with their host now requiring 57 runs off the last 30 balls. Glamorgan then needed a big over, and the 16th was just that for them. Wright was only at the crease very briefly, but his cameo made a lot of difference. Sussex were not helped at all by Yardy's injury after just two balls of the over, one of which Wright hit for six. Little then had to complete the over and Wright clipped him for a superbly timed maximum. The batsman edged a slog behind in the next over, but his 15 runs from just six balls had changed this match. Now 29 were wanted off the last three overs. These kinds of finishes is what this competition is all about. Who was going to hold their nerve? It was the birthday boy Cook, having brought the runs required down to 18 off the last two overs after making it to a 50 off only 25 balls. Cook then hit little for successive fours. Suddenly, from a rather precarious position, the South African-born batsman had put his side into the box seat, especially as he now had arguably the world's best finisher at this form of the game in debutante Sammy at the other end. The West Indian belted his fourth ball to the boundary, ensuring that 14 runs had come off the penultimate over, which left just four to get off the last one. Sammy finally hitting the winning runs off the very last ball of the match, although he was nearly caught. It was an excellent game of T20 cricket, with Cook the real difference between the two teams, as he finished on 65 from only 31 balls. And that gave Glamorgan a five-wicket win, which puts them on four points after three games and leaves the Sharks on four, having played a game more. Both sides are in action again next Friday when Sussex entertain Gloucestershire, while Glamorgan head to Somerset.